Well, it's like Broadway used to be. You know, it was all on a, on a great white way. The fact that it's a strip, and all these great performers are in all the places, and the best bands, and the best stagehands, and the finest equipment, you know, is, uh, they just go all out to uh, make the performer comfortable, so he does a, a consistent job for the audience. The unmistakable voice, charm, and charisma. Tony Bennett was the epitome of suave. Your music can never be more or less than yours, a human being. Tony is one fantastic human being. The legendary New York jazz singer. But on July 21st, 2023, Tony Bennett passed away at the incredible age of 96. All of the artists that I've ever met in my life, and I've been, I've been around artists my whole life. I went to art schools and uh, my whole life, and um, they're, they're, they believe in peace, they believe in hopefulness, they believe in uh, encouragement, they believe in a high education, they, they believe in sanity about things. They search for it. All, every artist I ever met is like that. After conquering the world with his big band hits, Tony went on to battle Beatlemania and re-emerged for new audiences alongside Lady Gaga. His diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease later in life became a hurdle he struggled to overcome. Mr. Bennett, what an honor to meet you. Uh, please call me Tony, all right? Tony, then. <laughs> Now, I don't really know where to start because I don't think many people can have had such an extraordinary career as yours. Well, thank you. I, well, I, I'm very fortunate. You know, I count my blessings. Anthony Dominic Benedetto, more commonly known by his stage name Tony Bennett, is one of America's most treasured singers. Born on August 3, 1926 to parents John and Anna Benedetto, he was the first member of his family to be born in a hospital. And he was the youngest of three siblings. His father emigrated from Patargoni, a small rural district in the southern Italian city of Reggio Calabria. Tony's mother was born in the USA after her own parents had also emigrated from Calabria in 1899. As a child, Tony's father instilled in him a great understanding of literature and a compassion for human suffering. Tony was raised during the Great Depression. Unemployment at this time reached as high as 20% across the country. Many families were left struggling, and many Americans had to make difficult decisions, such as heat for the winter or food to survive. When Tony was just 10 years old, his father passed away. As one of three siblings being raised by a struggling single mother with no father figure, Tony turned to the company of his uncles. His uncles influenced his early love for music and the arts.
Tony was a talented illustrator and had a knack for singing. As a boy, Tony sang at the opening of the Triborough Bridge, which was attended by several important figures, including President Franklin D. Roosevelt and the mayor of New York, Fiorello H. LaGuardia. By his early teenage years, Tony was already singing for money. He would sing to customers whilst waiting tables at various Italian restaurants to help support his family. All whilst balancing his education at New York School of Industrial Art, where he studied painting and music. Unfortunately, due to the difficult financial status of his family, Tony dropped out of art school to focus on earning money to support his family. He worked several low-paying jobs just to get by. He even worked at Associated Press in New York as a copy boy and runner. Music and art was still Tony's passion. Despite the trying times, he never set his sights any lower than what he wanted to achieve. He already had previous success singing as a young boy, but now as a young adult, a whole new range of venues provided more opportunities for Tony to sing and earn money. He soon began singing and waiting at nightclubs all across the city. His dream career was slowly coming to fruition. In 1944, Tony was drafted into the United States Army and thrown into the final stages of World War II. After a brief time in basic training, he was assigned as a replacement infantryman to the 255th Infantry Regiment of the 63rd Infantry Division. The unit had suffered heavy losses as a result of heavy fighting with Nazi forces during the Battle of the Bulge. Within months, Tony found himself along the front line. He described it as a front row seat in hell.
during the final stages of the war, Tony was involved with the liberation of Nazi concentration camps. He helped liberate a camp near Landsberg, Germany, which kept members of the 63rd Infantry Division prisoner. Witnessing the atrocities of war turned Tony into a pacifist. He spent some time occupying Germany and would sing to other American soldiers whilst performing under the stage name Joe Bari. After returning to America, Tony returned to school and studied at the American Theater Wing, an opportunity available to him as part of the GI Bill resulting from his service during the war. During his time at theater school, Tony was trained to better take care of his voice. He was taught the bel canto singing discipline, which involved using only a small fraction of one's dynamic vocal range and precise control of the vocal singing intensity. This technique would help maintain Tony's singing voice throughout his entire career. In 1951, two years after his discovery, Tony's first big hit, Because of You, shot Tony into the limelight. His song produced by Mitchell Miller gained popularity initially through jukeboxes, before reaching number one on the pop charts. Tony cemented his place as number one in the charts for 10 weeks. Over a million copies were sold, and Tony's career as a top musician was finally getting the fuel it needed. Tony was on the come up. Surrounded by successful artists such as Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, and Dean Martin, Tony was gaining popularity. His name was known, it was on billboards and flyers, and he even recorded songs for Broadway. Oh, 
In 1956, Tony filled in for Perry Como and hosted an NBC Saturday Night Television variety show, The Tony Bennett Show. For a whole month, Tony had his own television show from August 1956 to September that year. In 1954, Tony teamed up with guitarist Chuck Wayne. Chuck became Tony's musical director and assisted in the production of Tony's first full album, Cloud 7, featuring Chuck. The mid-50s saw a wave of electrifying music. Best is yet to come.
Our best is yet to come and babe, won't that be fine? You think you've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. Wait till the warm-up's underway. Wait till our lips have met. Wait till you see that sunshine place. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't that be fine? The 60s saw a greater push for musicians and artists to be more contemporary with their craft. Singers such as Lena Horne and Barbara Streisand received tremendous pressure from their record labels to record contemporary rock songs. As an artist signed to a major record label, Tony was no exception. Columbia Records president Clive Davis suggested that Tony too should focus his efforts on creating a contemporary rock song to spark the interest of the younger generations. Now the star of the show, Tony Bennett. Tony's been a favorite with audiences and record buyers since the early 50s. Electrifying performances make it even more popular at the time. Packed houses and million-seller records are the trademark, along with his taking his coat off as he is here. Rags to Riches, Stranger in Paradise, I Left My Heart in San Francisco are just some of the Bennett songs that delighted this star-studded audience, like Stuart Whitman, shown coming out here now. Well, that was Tony Bennett, singer, Next, the party for Tony Bennett, dramatic actor. But of course, Tony's attempt at rock and roll was unsuccessful. By 1972, he had departed Columbia for the Verve division of MGM Records and moved to London. Now signed to a new label, Tony began experimenting with new material. But his trial and error approach left him with wasted time and no recording contract. Tony started his own record company. He took creative control and recorded some of his best music, as well as two incredible albums with jazz pianist Bill Evans. I used to think it might be fun to be anyone else but me. I thought that it would be a pleasant surprise to wake up as a couple of other guys. But now that I've found you, I've changed my point of view. And now I wouldn't give a dime to be anyone else but me the high of success was fresh and kept tony motivated unfortunately it was short-lived as he failed to secure a distribution arrangement with a major label by 1977 the company was out of business and tony was left out in the open once again The rise to success and sudden fall took its toll on Tony. He failed to reignite his career. By the late 70s, Tony had developed a drug addiction and was in poor financial state, expending his funds. You had your own issues with cocaine back yeah. in, the, in, the, in the 70s and 80s. You came out of that. My Woody Allen's manager <clears throat> told me that he knew uh, that he used to manage Lenny Bruce the great uh, philosopher and poet that was on drugs. And I said, oh, I know Lenny. I said, what do you think of him? And he said, one sentence that changed my life. He said, he sinned against his talent. Hmm. 
and that stopped me cold. I withdrew. I had no withdrawal period. It, it just was a relief for me to stop everything. And um, I've been sober ever since, and I love it. That's made me very sane. Because uh, one thing about drugs, it finally gets to you. You don't get to it. It gets to you. With no solid management to support his career, no recording contract, and a lack of work, Tony had no way of mitigating his circumstances. Tony's career had been tumbling since the early 70s. In 1979, he overdosed on cocaine, an event that would shake him to his core. Tony was inches from death. During his recovery, Tony contacted his sons, Danny and Day. Danny and Day, just like their father, had musical talent. They both aspired to be musicians and even started their own band, Quacky Duck and his Barnyard Friends. In an attempt to reconcile his relationship with music, Tony sought after his son's help. Look, I'm lost here, he told them. It seems like people don't want to hear the music I make. Danny came to the realization that he had a knack for the business side of music. His father was struggling to find work, so he came to his aid. He had a head for business, something his father was lacking. Danny got his father's expenses in order, moved him back to New York, and started his new venture. Booking him into as many gigs as he could manage. Tony started small again. He performed in colleges and small theaters. Danny's idea was to get him away from the flashy Vegas image and let his father connect with smaller audiences. Eventually, Tony was back on track, earning a steady income from regular gigs, and he was able to pay back his debts to the IRS. During this time, he rekindled his working relationship with his old pianist and music director, Ralph Sharon. The two would enjoy a long-lasting partnership up until Ralph's retirement in 2002. By 1986, Tony Bennett was re-signed to Columbia Records, this time with creative control, and released The Art of Excellence since 1972. With help from his son, and by surrounding himself with like-minded individuals, Tony was able to turn his life around. He received praise and nominations almost continuously, and by 1999, he had an estimated net worth of $20 million. He continued to perform, collecting awards as he pursued what he truly loved.
In 2001, Tony's work effort was recognized, and he won a Lifetime Achievement Award at the age of 75. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. This is my Thank brother, Matt Tony. Hello. Nice to meet you. Yeah, well, Very proud. Uh, but this year is a, a stellar year for me because it's my 75th year. Uh, and uh, I'm getting all kinds of awards. The Smithsonian Institute is going to, I think I'm going to be the first artist in the Smithsonian. Uh, that will that will actually uh, be presented before I die. I'll be, I'll be alive to see it. That is basically like comparing you with a rocket scientist too, right? Well, Sonny and being in the... Well, I don't people. know about that. <laughs> Just fly me to the moon, man. <laughs> All right. For him, his age was just a number. Tony had no intention of retiring. He compared himself to Picasso, Jack Benny, and Fred Astaire. Right up to the day they died, they were performing. If you're creative, you get busier as you get older. See, I told you. Hey, Mr. Bennett, can I get a nice five here? Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bennett, what are you doing? One nice shot here, Mr. Bennett. And as we said before, there's no danger of you taking it easy. You're on a massive tour at the moment. You're in London playing at the Albert Hall, the mm -hmm. iTunes Festival. I know, and I, I love everything that's happening to me. You know, it's really thrilling, you know. I just feel uh, very blessed to have its own life. Now, I don't really know where to start because I don't think many people can have had such an extraordinary career as yours. Well, thank you. I, well, I, I'm very fortunate. Oh, I count my blessings. Now, I have, I have some facts for you, which I found extraordinary, and I want to, you to tell me if they're true or false. OK. Now, is it true that you've sung in front of 10 American presidents? How many? 10. Yes. Right, next one. Is it true that you've marched with Martin Luther King? That's true. And the final one, is it true that you presented the Beatles with their first ever awards? That's true, right, at Wembley Stadium, when they were just starting out. This is a day I'll, I'll never forget as long as I live. It's, it's to be treated this way at 90 years old, I feel like I'm 19 years old. It's a wonderful treat, and it's, a, it's one of the very special days in my whole life. As Tony aged, new problems began to develop, problems which would affect his daily life, problems that could potentially end his lifelong career. In 2016, Tony's family announced that he was suffering from Alzheimer's, a condition that many are familiar with. Mother, your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. 
people respond differently depending on their strengths. In Tony's case, it's his musical memory, his ability to be a performer. Those are an innate and hardwired part of his brain. So even though he doesn't know Just what the day might be or where his apartment is, he still can sing the whole repertoire of the American Songbook and move people. One word, Benedetto. <laughs> Tony Benedetto. I've known this man for 55 years. I've loved him for 55 years. And uh, um, everybody wants to show up for Tony. You know, he's, he's real. It's always been real. But you've managed to take some time out while you've been in London. We saw you at the tennis yesterday. Yeah, that was great, wasn't it? <laughs> Watching Federer, because he's your Federer. big favourite. Well, he's the number one, yeah. He... Now, I saw you jotting something down. Were you writing notes? I'm always you sketching. Taking... I always sketch. All of the artists that I've ever met in my life, and I've been, I've been around artists my whole life. I went to art schools and, uh, my whole life, and um, they're, they're, they believe in peace, they believe in hopefulness, they believe in uh, encouragement, they believe in a high education, then they, they believe in sanity about things. They search for it. All, every artist I ever met is like that. A uh, teacher I had in, in Paris, uh, Lani Boulanger, said, your music can never be more or less than yours as a human being. Tony is one fantastic human being. He really is. He always has been. He's never changed, you know. Even musically, everything is. He just grows and gets better all the time. Singing better than he ever sang in his life. You know? When I met him, he had a full, full heart as a hit, you know. Alzheimer's affects the brain, primarily the area of the brain that records and stores memories, the hippocampus. Tony struggled to make sense of his surroundings. He would forget people's names and sometimes forget people entirely. But when he would sing, Tony would be grounded. He was still there. I love you just the way you look tonight. There you go. Oh, hey. Hey. That's exactly what I want. Right there. There you go. Perfect. Okay, guys, right to me. Little smiles right here at first. Don't show my pants. <laughs> it's just it's just the head. Can't help Check. That's great. A couple more guys and we're done. Good. Great. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Hi, guys. Guys, together this way, please. This way. This way. Yeah. How did you guys actually meet? Why don't you tell her, Tommy? I don't remember. Oh, it's what? like we've always been here. I know, yeah. and it's true. It's every day I spend with him, I feel like I've known him my whole life. But we actually met at a charity event. Uh, we were uh, at the Robin Hood charity event in New York. We were, you know, we throw a bunch of rich people in the room who pay money That's to right. raise money for all the poor people right. in New York. <laughs> and uh, we were singing, and oh, I was singing, and Tony just happened to be in the audience. And I thought that the audience might like some standards that night because I'd been singing jazz my right. whole life. And then after the show, they said, "Oh, Mr. Tony Bennett wants to meet you." I said, "Oh my God, I sang jazz in front of Tony Bennett." <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, he's asked me immediately to make an album with him, and, you know, I've just been in heaven ever since. Never, never change Keep that breathless charm would you please arrange it? Cause I love you. You know, it was all on a, on a great white way. 
and all these great performers are in all the places and the best bands and the best stage hands and the finest equipment, you know, there's, uh, they just go all out to uh, make the performer comfortable so he does a, a consistent job for the audience. In my great country, um, the original laws of our forefathers were that we have freedom of speech. And somehow or other, that got muffled and uh, people feel that you shouldn't speak your mind and you're not allowed to and all that. And it's, it's against the, uh, the laws of our country. The audience sees you're a little nervous. They're going to support you and they'll They'll be friendlier than uh, if, if you didn't care whether you went over or not. Don't ever do any cheap songs. Only do quality songs that will last forever. Entertaining people. I've always loved entertaining people. So I like. I like. Uh, I'm gregarious. I don't mind. Uh, I'm, I don't try and hide away from the public or anything like that. I like entertaining. Them. So I enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you. If I may, just one quick second, uh, mention that Bob Hope. Uh, saw me in Greenwich Village many years ago and said, come on, kid, you're coming up to uh, the Paramount Theater. And he took me from, the, from Greenwich Village and uh, he said, what's your name? I said, Anthony Dominic Benedetto. He said, that's too long for the marquee. He said, let's Americanize you and call you Tony Bennett. And uh, what a night for me to sing for you. And all the world is a hopeless jumble. And the raindrops tumble all around. Heaven opens. In 2021, Tony sang his last performance live with Lady Gaga. Similar to Amy Winehouse, Tony had collaborated with friend and singer Lady Gaga on a reminiscent jazz album all while suffering from the devastating effects of Alzheimer's disease. I was often used many words to say a simple thing. It takes thought and time and rhyme to make a poem sing. With music and words, we've been playing. For you, I have written a song. To be sure that you know what we're saying, I'll translate as we go along. Although it was Tony's last performance, it wouldn't be his last memory. Best is yet to come and babe, won't that be fine? You think you've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. Wait till the warm-up's underway. Wait till our lips have met. Wait till you see that sunshine place. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't that be fine? The best is yet to come, and babe, won't that be fine? Tony Bennett died on July 21st, 2023. His publicist, Sylvia Weiner, confirmed his death, saying he died in his hometown of New York. There was no specific cause, but Bennett had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2016. The last of the great saloon singers of the mid 20th century. Bennett often said his lifelong ambition was to create a hit catalog rather than hit records. 
he released more than 70 albums, bringing him 19 competitive Grammys, all but two after he reached his 60s, and enjoyed deep and lasting affection from fans and fellow artists. Bennett did not tell his own story when performing. He let the music speak instead. The audience sees you're a little nervous. They're going to support you, and they'll they'll be friendlier than uh, if if you didn't care whether you went over or not. All of the artists that I've ever met in my life, and I've been I've been around artists my whole life. I went to art schools and uh, my whole life, and uh, they 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 believe in peace. They believe in hopefulness. They believe in uh, encouragement. They believe in a high education. Then they, they believe a sanity about things. They search for it. All, every artist I ever met is like that. <laughs> 